Hello there, and welcome to Scratch Challenge number five. So I've uh, got my Scratch here ready to go, and I'm just gonna kind of start by saying that last time we did a Scratch Challenge, we did uh, word variables, and we just talked about how to use word variables and join them into our um, an ask, sorry, a say or a think string. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna redo something very similar, but this time our variables were used. Um, we're going to use number ones, and I'll show you a couple different ways we can use numbers. So I'm going to start off with a when flag clicked. So similar to last time, uh, we're going to have a couple questions, and I'll just keep it to two questions for an example. So for our first variable, we're going to call this uh, username. So, um, is our first variable, and I'm sure you can guess what we're going to do with a variable called username. We're going to ask a question like, what's your name? And then we're going to set username to, and we're not going to make it zero, but instead, once we ask something, we're going to get an answer. So we make the username the answer to what's your name. The second thing I'd like to do, um, I'd like to make another variable, and let's call this uh, favorite number. So, and just to keep from having to type it all out, I want to call this fav number. And sometimes in your uh, making variables, it's common to actually make it all one word, so you don't actually space it out. You can actually keep them all together when you make variables uh, when you're coding. I kept it nice and short. You can some people make it even shorter and call it fav num, but don't make it so short that you don't understand what it's doing. Sometimes coders will call a variable n, and they really are the only people who know what it is. So I'm going to call it fav number, just to make it really clear. There we go. So I now have two variables. One's favorite number, one's username. With favorite number, I'm going to do another ask. I'm just drag in my answer for, you know, for a couple seconds, and I'm going to also ask what is your favorite There we go. So what is your favorite number, and what is your name? Perfect. So then in data, I'm going to set favorite number. And be careful that you're picking the right ones, because don't forget that setting, the difference between setting and changing. Changing is going to change it by, so it's like plus one. So think of this as, you know, favorite number plus one, and set is more like equals. So... There we go, set fave number to answer. So now I've got it set up. When, flag click, ask set, ask set. So we've got all the information going. Um, I have my variables displayed. You can Don't forget that you can make your variables not displayed by just uh, checking or unchecking them. And then uh, I'm just going to keep them displayed for right now. What's your name? My name is Ryan. And what is my favorite number? My favorite number is five. So let's pretend that I'm done. And one thing that you can sometimes do, in, uh, or not something you do, but some one thing that you want to commonly do when you are collecting information is you need to initialize your variables. So I've just started by asking. And if I start it again, so if I press stop and press play, right off the start, I still have the old information um, from my last time I played the game, which, can't, which is not a big deal. But let's pretend that fave number was instead lives. And I wasn't collecting information from the user, but I was setting the number of lives to a three or two. Well, if the last person used up all their lives and are at zero, it would still be at zero. So one thing you have to do when you're coding is do something called initializing your variables. How initializing works is you set your values up here at the top to what you want it to be when it first starts. So I want to set favorite number right off the bat to zero or to nothing. And we can just kind of have that to be zero. And we can also set, I'll just join those blocks together. I'm going to set username to nothing. So I'm actually going to clear that out. And we can even clear this one out too. We can clear them both out. And we can leave them empty. And so when you now run it, you can see that there's nothing stored within username and user number. So that's called initializing uh, your variables. So you can see I've initialized them. And I'll show you another example in a couple seconds. So say, um, let's do something now with our information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a say. And we'll just bring in a say for a 
couple of seconds, we'll build what it's going to be saying. So let's say, for example, we want to count the amount of letters there are in the person's name who's playing our game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to operators. And there's a couple really neat operators down here that let us do math. So right here, um, there's all sorts of operators that let us do math. There's addition, subtraction, multiply, divide. Um, there's greater than, less than, and equals to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use length. So length tells us the length of something. So if I click length of world, it's going to tell us that the length of world is five, five letters in the word world. So let's, instead of figuring out the length of world, let's figure out the length of username. So right now if I click it, it should say zero because we have no information about the username. So if we were to say, you know, my name is uh, a longer name, so we'll build a little bit more interesting. So now I've got the username in there. The length of username is now seven, which makes sense. In Lindsay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. Be careful, though. If the person enters in a space, it will count that also as a character or a letter in the username. So there's where we're at for username. So let's uh, do this as a join. Again, you remember this from before. So what I'm going to do is the sentence I'm going to make is there are length of username, bring in another join, drop it in the start there, so there are the length of username, don't forget your spaces, uh, letters in your name. Period. So let's try this out. So we've got that little block built. Stop and play. What's your name? My name is Ryan. What is your favorite number? My favorite number is five. Well, I'll keep it 45 for now. And there are four letters in your name. So that showed really quick. I'll just extend it just a little bit longer for future plays. So now we're, we already have, uh, we can count the number of letters in somebody's name. Um, another neat thing you can kind of do with this is uh, we can figure out what the a certain letter is. So what this one does is it tells you the letter number of the word. So let's figure out what the letter number We'll just go with the letter number three because there's, you know, most names have at least three. And don't pick too high of a number because if you pick a name like Ryan and you're looking at letter number six, then, you know, you're not going to get a good answer. You might get the answer of zero, which could be kind of confusing. And so I'll go back to my data. Still want to know the letter three of username. And we'll bring in a join now. So we could say something like the third uh, letter of your name is, don't forget a space, we'll pull in space, and then I'll put this in. So the third letter, letter three of username. So we'll bring in a say, bring in a join, and then go with uh, Just show up for nice and long. And then we'll, what's your name? Uh, we'll go with uh, Stephen. What is your favorite number? Uh, seven. There are six letters in your name. Seems right to me. The third letter of your name is E. Fantastic. So one other thing we could do is you can do math with your different examples. So you could say, for example, let's bring in an operator. And we could say, all right, well, let's multiply the length of username. So Go back to length and length of username. And we'll do length of username. We'll go multiplied by favorite number. So let's just start with that. And we won't do anything crazy with it yet. We'll just say the answer just to start out, and we'll build that slowly here. So let's do some math with that. Oops. Bring that back in. We have the whole block. Bring that up to the top just to get it to display it real quick. What's your name? My name is Ryan. So that's the number four is the number of letters in my name, and my favorite number is five. So what's going to happen is it's going to say the length of username, which is four, times favorite number, which is five, should be 20. 
and it says it right there. So it just takes it. So if we want to make that, you know, make a little bit more sense, we can um, do all sorts of crazy things with it. So for example, we could say, uh, we could bring in now a join. Uh, you're the number of letters in your name times your favorite number is, and then you can drop in, there we go, and we can bring that in there, get rid of that mess. And let's go. So, what's your name? Let's go with uh, Lindsay. Favorite number is three. So, there are seven letters in the uh, name Lindsay, I believe. And three is favorite number. So, seven multiplied by three or seven groups of three would make 21. So, there's different ways you can use this as well. So let's, for example, pretend that you are making a game. And in your game, you want to have a variable called lives. Common thing that people want. And then this time, what we're going to do is in the event, so let's just pretend that we're going to get this to be triggered of when the spray is clicked. So what we're going to do is we're going to change lives by one. So every time you click on your sprite, we're going to change lives, and we're going to actually lose a life. So to make that to be a loss of life, life, we're going to make that negative one. So in this sprite click, change lives by negative one. We can't forget one thing. We can't forget to initialize our variables. So when the flag is clicked, we're going to have to set lives. I'll just drop this in right here. That's where we're initializing our code. And we're going to set our lives initially, right on the start of the game, to three. So when they first start the game, their lives will be three, and then every time when they click the sprite, change lives by negative one. So then you can go like this. What's your name? And then I'll just try this out. So I'm going to click on this, and you notice our lives have gone down by two. Click down, and our lives have gone down by one. Lives are at zero, and this is where you can probably do something where, you know, at zero lives or, you know, at three lives, something happens. So you can do that in your flag clicked. So you could be doing a forever, or probably a forever. And then you could do if. And then you could do a data. We can say if your lives equal zero so if you have zero lives left so if you have zero lives left then we could do something like motion and maybe we uh or let's do a something crazy let's do uh um i'm trying to think what we could do oh, i know what we could do um let's do a simple glide just to so we can get some action happening and we'll have glide to i don't know 200 and then Stop. What's your name? And I'm going to ignore this and do some of the click stuff. One, two. Oh, geez, it didn't work. Let's see if this solves our problem. There we go. So I just had the the uh, the the sensing of if lives equals zero is in the wrong spot. So it has to be here when your sprite is being clicked, and not when flag is clicked. So now we have it sensing. Now when you stop and press refresh, your character is over here, not where you wanted it at the start. So you need to initialize that as well. So we need to go to, we're going to go to, and don't forget to set your character back to the start. So now stop, play, and now you have them where you want. And now you've initialized his location and the variables as well. All right, so once you have that working, um, you have the basic idea of initializing your variables, um, asking for information, and then storing that information in variables, and then be able to use 
information either you know within a say or even as a variable that kind of maintains lives and then when lives are out then you can get something to happen the game stops or a message is played or maybe the colors of your character change so what you're going to do for your uh, your challenge is something very similar to the sample I've made up for you um, so with this sample what I've done is uh, I just ask what your name is to start welcome Ryan to click 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 wow click on me to get different behaviors to be seen so what I've done so I've let the variable be shown. You don't have to do this, but it's just easy to kind of get the idea. Um, I've said that the behavior should occur at three, five, and seven clicks. You don't necessarily have to say this, but just for the example, I thought it'd be very valuable to show. So I start clicking, and you see on my first click, I've now got it one, two, three. So on the third click, I change the sprite's costume, and I play the message or show the message. Wow. Click four. Five. See, I've done a whirl. On click, I set the costume back to normal. And on seven, I play a sound. I change the sprite's colors, and I'm having the sprite glide back and forth, back and forth. And that's, I know my code, and now it's trickier to click on them. So you see, I'm not clicking, not clicking, and now you got to really get your mouse skills going to get up in clicks. That's the uh, basic idea um, of the challenge. I will post this in the YouTube video. Um, so if you want to see how I did this code, um, it's all there. Um, but that's challenge number five is to do click, 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 wow, or click, 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 something else. I look forward to seeing your um, projects. And um, please remember to tag it with TLDSB code.